How much is too much? In other words, what procedures are reasonable and for whom? And how young is too young to start it? And how old is too old to risk it? Good morning, I'm Kelly. And I'm Gail, and I told my husband Michael, if I ever, God forbid, get in a car accident oh. and my face gets smashed, oh. do not bring in a picture of me oh. for reconstructive surgery. Bring in a picture of Michelle Pfeiffer. <laughs> oh, really? That makes absolute perfect sense to me. We have a prominent Beverly Hills plastic surgeon with us um, who is going to address the uh, what, who, and how of the plastic surgery question, and also a family therapist who is going to look at the whys and the why nots. In other words, what exactly do we have to do and go through to look like Michelle Pfeiffer, and how crazy is it going to make our heads before, during, and after? Cosmetic surgery coming up. How much is too much? Next. <laughs> is a prominent Beverly Hills board certified plastic surgeon this morning. He has recently been interviewed by Us Magazine about celebrity cosmetic surgery. Please welcome Dr. John Perlman. Good morning. Good morning. It's nice to Okay, so who have you done? No, just kidding. <laughs> we asked him that earlier and he said, well, you've heard of Elizabeth Taylor, you've heard of Frank Sinatra, you've heard, well, I've never met any of those people, right? That's true. Can a patient go too far with cosmetic surgery? There's no question. But in my experience, most patients who come in for cosmetic surgery leave very satisfied and gratified having had a plastic surgical procedure. Um, there can be excess and that has to be avoided. But most patients have really normal, reasonable expectations and are very satisfied after having cosmetic now, surgery. Now, uh, Kelly mentioned in the introduction that you were board certified. Yes. So, like, you really shouldn't go to your pharmacist or your druggist and say, do me. Unfortunately, uh, though that's a, uh, an exaggeration of the present situation, there are too many doctors who are not really trained as plastic surgeons starting to practice plastic surgery. You do not have to be a board certified or even a trained plastic surgeon to call yourself a plastic surgeon in what California. What does it take? In other words, uh, how little do they need to have in the way of um, An MD training? degree is really uh, adequate to do a cosmetic surgical mm. operation in your office, and that's very unfortunate and dangerous to the patient. So what we recommend is that patients seek out surgeons who are certified by the American Board of Plastic Surgery. And this means that they've had a minimum of three, sometimes five years of general surgical training and an additional two or three years of training as a plastic surgeon. So you were in school forever. You it were was a <laughs> long time, but it was worth it. I really enjoyed it. Now, can a woman, uh, have you ever seen somebody get, go too far with this? Yes, I have. And uh, it's unfortunate when it happens because it's a temptation for a patient to seek out a doctor who will go a step further. And I may turn the patient away, but I've seen several whom I know have seen three or four plastic surgeons prior to coming to my office, and I'm sure go to see three or four additional ones afterwards, mm -hmm. trying to find the one person who will operate again. And that's very, it's a sad situation when that happens. So what, what are the two big things? It's like looking younger and bigger, right? <laughs> <laughs> Not always bigger, but generally speaking, patients want to look their best. I don't think I can remember a patient coming in and saying, I want to look like I did when I was 27 years old. I, patients, I hear from patients that they want to look healthy, rested, and good for their age. Also, women come in who want breast enlargements, for example. They don't want to be a Dolly Parton. That's exceptionally rare. What they do look for, though, is to have better balance in their body. They want to be able to wear a matching bathing suit top and bottom. They want to fill out a dress properly. Those are the real guidelines that we use. Will you change your look, Dr. Perlman? In other words, if somebody says, I want a cleft chin, you know, I want a Michael Jackson look, because he did change his look now. He changed his look yeah. uh, pretty aggressively, actually, and a lot of people are critical of that. Uh, and that is, uh, his work has been done to, a, to an extreme, I think it's fair to say, and I think most people agree. Uh, it's not unreasonable to change somebody's look if you're improving it, if they're going to be happy with the new look, and they have a realistic expectation of the degree of change and what will occur. See, and what I you always can think, do. That, I always exactly. think the look can never get changed that much, that you still say hi and you know who the person is, that only like Nazis <laughs> in Argentina can look different. That's very true. But our goal is to make somebody look well-rested but natural. If, uh, if a lady comes in with hanging skin of her cheeks mm -hmm. and neck, 
I don't want everybody on the street to go, oh, Jean just had a facelift. That's not the goal. The goal is, why does Jean look so good? She's been on vacation for six weeks. She yeah. looks fantastic. New hairstyle. Now, you've brought weight. some pictures, so we're going to take a look at those now, some of the, uh, the, the procedures that you have done and some of the results before and after. Wow, that's Take great. a look over here, Dr. Perlman, and tell us what we're looking at. Well, Whoa. this is a woman who came from out of state who was very unhappy with the appearance of her neck. She obviously had a tremendous amount of skin draping down underneath her chin, and she wanted that corrected. Now, she had a, a neck lift and a facelift to does accomplish that. Hurt? that. Does that hurt? Not very much, surprisingly little. Really? And is it expensive? Moderately. Okay. Moderately, but the benefits, I think, are worthwhile. I would take it alone, okay. This is a That's <laughs> true. This is a gentleman who was unhappy with the appearance of his neck, and I Major noticed difference. that his chin was small, mm -hmm. and he also had extra fat underneath his neck. So a combination of a small chin Im implant placed in front of the chin, as well as liposuction of the undersurface of the neck, created that very dramatic and improvement. He could, I mean, even if he was a criminal, he wouldn't be caught. He looks very different. Really? <laughs> Here's a lady who had an imbalance between a slightly prominent nose and a slightly small or moderately small chin. There's her after. Looks great. This very attractive young woman was unhappy with the fullness of her cheeks, and my goal was to liposuction her cheeks just to highlight her cheekbones as well as to bring out her jawline. So this isn't too extensive a procedure, is it? No, this is a fairly minor procedure. This is a woman who was unhappy with a, an excessively thick pad of fat in her stomach. Mm -hmm. And although it looks like she's holding her stomach in, in the after picture on the right, that's not the case. It was quite a dramatic change. All right. That is amazing. I Here's what woman, is this? This is a woman who wanted more prominence. She had her legs done? Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Those are calf implants. And she had her shoes done, too. Look. <laughs> really? <laughs> These are calf <laughs> implants? This is something ra rather new then, yes? Yes, it is. It's relatively new, and it adds to the shape and the contour of the calves for women who like to wear short skirts. So now, does that hurt? And is it expensive? That's not expensive, but it's uncomfortable for about two or three weeks. Does it leave scars? Minimal scars. Hmm. Now, we just saw a breast lift. Mm -hmm. Yes. Quickly. yes, that was but a the breast which enlargement. Was a major oh, look, there it is again. There's yes. a major difference. Uh, exactly. Very natural, soft, nice-looking breasts, which are now obtainable with the new techniques that we use. What are the new te techniques? What is the new technique in breast implants? Well, we're using new implants, new materials that give a woman a greater assurance of softness and a very natural look, so that when you lie down on your back, your breasts aren't left standing up straight and, mm -hmm. and are hard. And it's a dramatic improvement over the techniques of the 60s and 70s. What else is new? You well, lip implants? And uh, lip injections with collagen is very uh, exciting right now. Calf implants, pectoral implants are being done on men. Liposuction is very popular. A natural look is really what we're trying to do. All right, to pectoral <laughs> implants. We're going to hear more about that. Coming up and joining us will be a therapist who will tell us what cosmetic surgery does to your head before and after. We'll be right back. Very, very enthusiastic group. I think they have a lot to say about cosmetic <laughs> surgery, which is what we're talking about. And joining us now is a therapist who is heard six nights a week. Um, KFI. KFI Radio, Monday through Saturday. She gets Sunday off. She sort of works our <laughs> schedule. She has several concerns about cosmetic surgery and how far is too far. Please welcome back to K&G, Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Thank you. Thank you for being with us again. And you say that you have uh, come up upon patients who have gone too far with this. Well, you have to understand the underlying dynamics of why people do this. I was jostled by the last words you said, natural. Anything but natural is what we're talking about. And a natural look, he was yes. saying, though. Achieve oh, and what's a natural that? Look. Uh, I think if we had Marilyn Monroe today, she'd be liposucked from head to toe because her body physique does not fit today's standard of beauty, which is very thin. Yet that was a voluptuous woman's body, so we would change that around, which I think is sad. But are we coming back to roundness? Are we coming back to a li please say yes? Looks definitely <laughs> do change, and uh, there's no question that uh, hair color has changed and style of body configuration has changed is changing gradually sure, also. Sure. So every 20 years we're going to have a different natural. Yes, but tell us sad. about patients. Well, that this you patient have come came upon. in, tiny little lady, real narrower than I am, with these breasts that were out to here, made Dolly Parton look like oh. she needed an implant. Uh -huh. And I couldn't believe this. So finally, as part of the intake, I asked about her breasts, which is an interesting kind of she thing. She came in about her divorce and you asked yes, about Yes, actually, her that's true. <laughs> and uh, we spent on and off about five years in therapy. 
she had a lot of very serious problems from her childhood with psychological incest and a lot of problems with no close bonding with her mother. Now, after the five years of therapy, she went off into the world and did her things, and I got a call one day. She went to a plastic surgeon and had these things put back to normal because she didn't need them anymore because her self-image and her sense of value came from within, and this didn't matter, and she took them off. Okay, but she's an extreme case, wouldn't you say? Wouldn't I you would. both say? Absolutely. Well, not from what I've seen. I, I don't know what you mean by an extreme case. Well, I mean, somebody going from here to here to here to yeah, here. Yeah, but some physician was willing to do that. And, and the part that bothers them, you know, me. We're talking about self-esteem here, and uh, Dr. Perlman, you talked about the, the very real self-esteem that you see in a patient who may have very small breasts and... Have it's my feeling that uh, plastic surgery and cosmetic surgery is clearly not a replacement for psychotherapy. And uh, it would be wrong for one to assume that patients in the waiting room of a psychologist need cosmetic surgery if their problem is self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Equally, I think it's wrong to assume that a patient in my office waiting room uh, needs psychotherapy just because she wants her breasts enlarged or some fat suctioned or a bump removed from the nose. I think we're talking about a balance. We're talking about appropriate surgery. and.